Hi, I'm Michael Astor, and this is Ability Fierce. Today on Ability Fierce, we have a very special guest, Athena Savidis. She's a 29-year-old young lady who happens to be a neighbor of mine, and I invited her on to talk about her experiences growing up with cerebral palsy in mostly typical schools where she was with typically developing kids. And we were talking about how important that was, that typically developing kids have contact with people with disabilities and that disability people with disabilities aren't segregated. Hi Athena, how are you? Hi. Michael. Good to see you. Good, how are you? I, I really know you're glad a, to be here. I know you're a little nervous, but you don't have to be nervous because this is ability fierce and this is for you to tell us all about yourself. Okay. That sounds great. You know, I was actually wondering why you like to say typically developing instead of non-disabled. That was interesting to me. You know, I have a problem with all the terminology because if you say something one way, somebody gets upset or someone gets, so I thought typically developing was pretty safe. Whereas if you say non-disabled, you're saying it's like a double negative. That's, yeah, I see that. Yeah, okay, that's but, true. but I don't. Everyone has different words. But I'm I, just curious. But I don't think we should get too stuck up in the, you know, like somebody said, no, you have to say people with disabilities and not disabled people. And I understand, but I also understand that it's not so much getting the words right as the what you mean, what you feel getting inside. Getting your actions right. Right, yeah, yeah. I understand you. Yeah. Okay. So tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, how, did you grow up in Park Slope your whole life? Yes. Yeah. And where did you go to school? I went, well, which school? Well, where did you start? Elementary school. Yeah. Uh, PS-176 in Bensonhurst. Mm -hmm. And that um, was a barrier-free school? Yes. I went to all barrier-free schools. So all my schools had, um, you, uh, you know, wheelchair users in them. Mm -hmm. But as I was saying to you the other day, I was the only one in my school who, in my schools who was fully in regular ed mm -hmm. class. And how did that feel? How was that for you? It felt normal. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel weird until um, afterwards, really. I tell this story a lot about this one day um, when I accidentally got put in a special ed health class, and that was very interesting because then I suddenly realized that that's where all the real users were all the time and that's why I never saw them except when they cut class when I was in <laughs> high school so many people would cut class where were you all in, the time. where were you in high school um Edward R Murrow in Midwood okay yeah and did you have a one-on-one a, a -on -one para or? I did yeah. yeah so it was hard to cut class with the one-on-one -on -one para no 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 <laughs> no no they were just a ski you know and you later on there were there was a paper that every para had to take mm -hmm. to mark down if their student cut class and my my para wouldn't take one. Okay. She said, no, I don't need one, I'm good. Because that's that's the thing is that you the para should be there to help you and if you were uh, a typically developing kid or a non-disabled kid or yeah. however you want to call it, you would cut class, right? Yeah, well, I didn't want to. Okay. But everyone else did. Right, but uh, <laughs> what I'm saying is that that's the problem with paras is that but they didn't stop their students. Well, that's good. They would just leave. I mean, it's not good, but it's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you should have the autonomy to do what you want to do. Yeah. Not just just because someone... Exactly. Some, yeah. But I never... That's not why I never cut class. So why did you never cut class? I just didn't think it was cool. <laughs> I wanted to go to class. Okay. And, you, and what, did you, what did you study for? What did you do? French. In French. Uh-huh. Um, and that's, what, what did you dream of doing with French? I ha have had and still have a dream of um, being a high school French teacher, mm -hmm. but I graduated five years ago, so since then a lot of other interests kind of came in, mm -hmm. but I'm still geared toward it. I do lots of things with French all the time, and I started studying when I was 12. So what, so. what attracted you to French? I had, in the sixth grade, I had a very bad Spanish teacher, and the people in the, the students in the, um, the gifted program mm -hmm. 
um, had an opportunity to switch to French. Mm. So I said, okay, anything has to be better than this because I hadn't <laughs> learned anything. And our French teacher was amazing. And um, her name is um, her name is Miss Sutton now. And, Miss um, Sutton, shout out to Miss Sutton. Yeah. <laughs> and, or um, Madame Mademoiselle Sutton. Well, I think she's married now. Okay. But um, <laughs> what I was I get, what I was gonna say was um, I was actually volunteering at the school where I've been volunteering last year, and her she was there to pick up her son, mm -hmm. so that was nice. Oh, her great. Son goes there. So you saw so her again. So she was my, she's the reason I started um, studying French. Does she know that you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, but you haven't been able to become a French teacher. No, because my, my parents uh, discouraged me from getting a master's degree um, because they didn't want to help me pay for it unless there was proof on the other end that I could get a job. Mm hmm from it and I tell them there's never proof for anyone and now they're coming around to it because it's been five years and I've only had two very part-time jobs and a whole bunch of volunteering mm -hmm. so but um my mom still says to me things like would you want to study disability studies and I say no right well that's sort of what um, we were talking you know? about before everyone thinks because you're disabled you should study disability exactly. studies right well, I'm I'm rooting for your French. Uh, yeah. Stuff. It's 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 a passion of se one of several, which is really confusing mm -hmm. for me. But. But do you think that your disability hurt you? And like, if you what hadn't you? been disabled, you would already be a French teacher. Oh, um, absolutely. So what do we do to to fix that? To make. <laughs> we, uh, I don't know if somebody could. Help me pay for my master's degree. That would be great. All right, there. I was just looking. There's this program where if you you get in the program and you study, and at the same time you work at the schools. Oh and, and, yes, and the, that yeah. that's an interesting disability issue, because um, due to my disability, I don't have the stamina to be in school and work at the same time. Mm. So I haven't done that because ever since I was very young, my homework. Mm -hmm. um, because I need a scribe, mm -hmm. like someone to write for me. My homework has always taken me hours and hours and hours. And, you know, I was never even in extracurricular activities until senior year mm -hmm. for my resume because I just didn't have time. And one of my biggest regrets of high school is not joining the theater program, which was after school because most of my friends are in it. And... I would have had a great time, and now I'm super interested in acting, and I, that's a regret that I wouldn't have had to do that if my homework didn't take me so much longer. Yeah, I know. My, Nick had the same issue, mm -hmm. was that it took him a long time to do his homework, not because he wasn't smart, but because of the motor coordination. Yeah, just the writing and talking to, like, the scribe and everything. Right. It takes twice as long. Yeah, it makes it harder. Mm hmm and uh, so, but maybe you could reach out to the city or something in that program and say, "Can I do it on a, a Part more like?" Yeah, I mean, it's, much it's, less. I mean, this is these are accommodations. There should be accommodations. That's an interesting. But how would I reach them? Well, let's look at this. We'll I, we'll investigate. Yeah, let's look into it. Yeah, no, because that sounds interesting. Definitely. Because this is one of the things I'm saying is that people think, "Oh, it's accessible," but it's not accessible. Yeah. And just because you have this disability, you speak French, you pro a lot of people I've seen in the public school system who teach French don't even speak French very well. Is that true? I, I had very good teachers. I, I, I'm sure you did, but I remember some of my kids had teachers who were Spanish who were teaching French and it wasn't... Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and different things. I find it very hard in the public school system because almost everybody learns Spanish or takes Spanish class, but yeah. almost nobody learns Spanish. Oh, yeah, that's and, true. And my, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I didn't know you had more than one child. Oh, yeah, I have a daughter, too. Oh, I didn't know And that. she took French, and she doesn't speak French. Oh, nice. At okay. all, but she did pass. You know what I mean? Mm. They managed to te teach that's you to, to pass. That's what it is. Language classes, it's just a pass. Right. 
but to get because very few people have that drive to go further in that in America. I mm -hmm. feel like have you been in to Europe? France? Like everybody has, speaks like Canadian. Just, oh yeah. Um, I've been to France. I was there when I was 18 for 12 days, mm -hmm. but I really don't remember much, and I want to go back. But France is very inaccessible. Yes, Paris. I was uh, terrible. I was in Paris with Nick, and there's all oh, these yeah. old buildings and it's cobblestone really streets, and yes. it's very. It was very hard. Mm -hmm. You're right. So yeah. we have to tell these Parisians to, in yeah. French. So how would you say that in French? <laughs> <laughs> I I met a man in Paris. We saw, my dad and I saw him on the um, in the in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and I met him. And he's an architect, and he had an accident, and he remodeled his entire house. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. But that's the thing. But the, he's in the minority. When he was not everybody when he, can remodel their own When he houses. didn't have the accident, he didn't think about. It. Maybe I don't know. It's a, it usually it happens when it happens to you or your kid or something. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's um, an issue. But it's very I, bad. But I think you should be a French teacher. I think if you did get the teaching degree and the certificate, the schools would hire you. You think so? Well, yeah. I mean, if they they, if they, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be worried that the kids wouldn't interact with me well. Well, that's a good question, but the point is that you would have the added advantage of saying, well, are you discriminating against me because of my disability? Right, right, right. Right? Yeah. So you could say, and I think that the kids would come to understand. I mean, some classes it's hard to keep everyone in control, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think that when they come to understand you and you, if the accommodations are there, I don't see why not. You're a very sociable person. Yeah, I had a good I have, have a good time volunteering and it was good in the school. I mean some students didn't trust me, but I think that's just normal happens sometimes cuz the student the the class had three different um assistants mm -hmm. and students would automatically gravitate maybe towards another one. <laughs> yeah. You know? But we would always, you know, talk about asking for help and not like being worried. I think one of the big problems in the school system. They're seven. <laughs> seven what? Years old. Seven year old. The students always. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that maybe if the, one of the big problems in the school system is the classes are too big. Oh yeah, that's why we had three assistants. Right. So, but maybe if there was a smaller class, you would be more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There would be more room to move around. Mm -hmm. That was an issue. I couldn't get really to the back of the classroom. Right. You see. Yeah, because it's crowded. Right. And the other thing is that the kids would more have to come to you than you go to the kids, right? Right. right. Exactly. So if it was a smaller mm -hmm. class classroom, or maybe the kids were like certain kids had to go to you for assistance, like they assigned, they said that would have yeah. solved the problem. And, and I, I would sit with them, and mm -hmm. they would sit in, in the front with me. Mm -hmm. I was helping the students who were waiting basically for their special ed services to get approved. Mm -hmm. So they would need a lot of extra help. Mm. So they were also taking French? Uh, it was a, it's a bilingual school. Oh, oh, oh so right. They, there is they have uh, Spanish, uh, French classes and Spanish classes and English. Mm -hmm. So the students I was with had a completely different teacher every other day. W was with the, every other day they were with their English teacher. So they never had the same teacher? Yeah, they did every oh, other day. Every other day. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. So, but you Sometimes I would have to speak English with them because for the students who didn't speak French at home, it was tough. Yeah, I mean... I know that when I was growing up and I took French class, if they just talked to me in French, I je ne comprends out. pas. Yeah, <laughs> you just tune out. My yeah. students would do that. Sometimes I would have to speak to them in French. I mean, I'm not supposed to, but sometimes there was no other way. So, mm. um, yeah. You weren't supposed to speak to them in English, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, I know, because I've taught Portuguese. Oh, no, I taught wow. English in Brazil, 
And my students, I said to them, I said, everyone, I want you to give me a five-minute talk in English. And they were like, five minutes? That's so hard. That's so long. I said, I talked to you for 45 minutes in Portuguese, and I don't even know it. <laughs> Why were you in Brazil? Oh, I was there to see what the culture, the people, um, just to change. Because I grew up in New York. And when you grow up in New York, where do you go? Were you there a long time? Almost 15 years. Oh, so your son grew up my there. My son was born in Brazil. My daughter was born in Brazil, yeah. Do you speak Portuguese? Yep. That's nice. Portuguese is really beautiful. I like it, but it destroyed my French. Oh, gosh. Because I used to speak French, <laughs> and then I learned Portuguese. and So I start speaking French, and then I change to Portuguese, and people look at me and go, you are Italian? <laughs> <laughs> So you said there were other things that, um, but since you, your dream was to be a French teacher, but you said lately you've had other ideas and yeah, stuff? Yeah, like I said, like acting mm -hmm. or social work or writing. I write poetry all the time because I can never, I don't have the stamina to get through a story. Mm -hmm. I write poems like a couple of times a week. And what are your poems, ab what are your poems about? Um, politics, mostly. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I have a lot of different ideas, like... Political poetry? No, like, I, I, like I write poems somewhat about news stories. Okay. Yeah. Do you have one you could recite for us, or...? I don't have any of them memorized, and they're a little private right now. Okay, <laughs> okay, I know. Poetry um, is personal, right? Yeah, but if I had one memorized, I would tell it to you, but they're a little long. Mm -hmm. Because what I would do is, I, like, synthesize the, like, the news mm -hmm. stories just to, like, process it. But I also write poems for friends, and, like, if they're going through things. Mm hmm Yeah. So that to cheer them up or to make them... What, if your friends are going through things, you write poems for them? Yeah. About their situation or about life or yeah about life. Uh huh. <coughs> so, are most of your friends disabled or are they? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Most of my younger friends are disabled mm -hmm. because I met them at summer camp. Most of them are a little bit younger than me. Uh huh. Um. But most of my older friends. With whom I kind of find easier to get along with sometimes, because mm -hmm. like you know, I'm I'm a little older. Mm -hmm. There, most of them don't have disabilities. Okay, and where did you meet them? Um, in my community, in my chorus, mm -hmm. which is like oh, you sing a huge part of my life. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. I've been singing since third grade. When my middle school didn't have a chorus, I joined it after school. That was the only after school activity I did until senior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny. Nick, Nick was in a chorus at 51 and we went on a trip to Boston and it was good for him. I thought it was, it was a, a good experience. But I was always interested in how he, he got made friends and because he was like you. He was mainstream so he was the only he was in general ed with services. Okay. And Travel with disabilities is very difficult, no? Yes. But how, how did you, did well, you do uh, that? Uh, Nick would use a walker, not a wheelchair, but he went very slow. But I was very... Okay, I'm not able to like use a walker. Right, so I could Doesn't pick him up. Doesn't have a chair? And he has a, a, sco a mobility scooter. Okay. He probably would have been in a chair if he had other parents, but I said I wanted <laughs> to keep. I wanted That's to keep. That's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we had a big fight with the doctor. I, I would be. A, I would probably be a French teacher if I had other <laughs> parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's the that's the one of the problems with disabilities is your parents have more impact on your life than, than maybe they should, right? Isn't that funny? <laughs> but, 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 so, <laughs> it's, I guess it is funny. <laughs> it may be something else too, I don't know. But I think, I mean, this is something that I struggle with and I talked to, to Nadina about is the parents 
have one feeling and the kids have another feeling. And sometimes the parents do know more because they're older and maybe wiser. And sometimes the kids know more because yeah. they're the ones who have to... It's perspectives, you know? Yeah. But some parents, because they're more calm mm -hmm. and stuff, are willing to try more things. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of my younger friends, their parents let them do more things. And so it's an adjustment because mm -hmm. every family, it's different. Like you said about going to Boston and my mom doesn't really travel with me. Mm -hmm. Like... I don't know when I'm going to get to go to France next time because it was a, like, you know, it was a graduation gift I went to France, but it was very hard. My dad doesn't want to do it again, you well, know, so it's also, I was just curious how you handle about it. Well, it, it is hard. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, as you get older and the kid gets bigger, it's hard, you know. Oh, like, yeah. I've had some nasty sure. falls with Nick. Oh, and, no. and I cracked my skull, and I had this neck brace, mm. and I was sitting at work, and this girl came up to me, and she said, uh, yeah, my dad had a lot of carrying injuries. And I said, huh? She said, my, my brother was disabled, and he had a lot of carrying injuries. And I never heard that phrase before, but I knew what she meant, that you yeah. get injured when you carry somebody badly. Mm -hmm. So that's a big problem. Yeah especially in Park Slope where there were all those stairs. Do you have, yeah. I don't, I guess you don't have stairs. Yeah, my, my house was ramped when I was really little, mm -hmm. so I don't even remember not having a ramp, really. Mm -hmm. Like, not ramp, but it's flat. Right, so you can get in and out. And then, like, my apartment doesn't have stairs. Right, you see, because we had steps, and we have a very narrow apartment, and then this doctor was like, he has to be in a power chair. And I'm like, we can't get it into the building. We can't move. Now I understand. You see? Mm -hmm. Perspective. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You didn't want to move out of your house? I didn't know. Why? Because I didn't think we needed to. I think, I mean, I'll say the downside was what I would see at school with Nick was when he was with the walker, mm. the kids didn't stay with him. They'd talk with him. And then they'd walk off, and he couldn't keep up. You're kidding. It, well, that's just part of I didn't kids. really socialize when I was at school. I was too focused on school, so I didn't realize that kids did those things. I just talked like in class. Right, but when you have a power chair, you could keep up with them at least. Not but I was a slow driver. Well, always have been. Well, there's that too. I mean, that I, what I what fascinates me is how you integrate and how you so so when he went to college. What really changed for him was that he started hiring students to help him. Yeah, the colleges told me that they wouldn't let me do that because it was a liability. But not all colleges tell you that. Well, the, you know, I don't know if you know the story, but the, the college he went to, they didn't want him there, and it was a lot of a fight. But once we got there, they did. We were able to. I don't think they could stop you from hiring students if you just hire them. Didn't tell them. Yeah. You know. I think we were too nervous. Yeah, well, this is, it's, it's, it's hard. I didn't go away. I, I ended up home. That's another. But the thing is for that, uh, what I'm saying is like for Nick, this was a big difference because yeah. when they see a professional helping you, they think only the professional can help you. But when they see a, a kid helping you. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they okay. think, hey, I could do it too. Mm -hmm. So that's changed a lot. But. Okay. Is, is Nick happy that you stayed in your house? I think so. I think okay. so. I was surprised because what happened was he had a spinal fusion surgery. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he was in the rehab hospital, the doctor was very pushy about him getting into a power chair. And I thought that Nick would, I thought it was me who was pushing him to stay out of a power chair. But Nick said, no, I don't want to be in one. And he, he was the one who took it because um, I was ready to give up at that point, even though that would have probably meant moving and stuff. Yeah. I mean, but we did get him a, a scooter, which helps him because now he can keep up with his yeah, friends more. I mean, that's what it is. It's personal choice. It shouldn't be like, oh, um, you know, I'm your parent. I don't want you to have a wheelchair. Use crutches mm -hmm. or use a walker. Mm -hmm. It's more normalizing. 
mean, that's not good. I mean, it was never an option for me because mm -hmm. walkers just did, weren't functional. I hate that word, but... Um, I know, there were all sorts of useful. words that people... <laughs> but, like, you know, so that wasn't an option for me, but I think if my parents had said that, it mm -hmm. would have been hard. Now, you, this is something we were talking about before that mm. interested me, was you said you did conductive ed. Oh, yeah, but I don't know if I can talk about it. I barely remember it. Oh, okay. I was four, five, and six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was difficult. That's all I remember. So they made you work a lot. It was difficult, and we ate kosher food. That's, <laughs> That's all, all I remember. remember. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, don't, you can't recommend it or not recommend it? It's doesn't seem to have helped me, but I wouldn't know enough to recommend it or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know people who have liked it okay. more yeah. than I did. Yeah, I know, but that's like one of these things, like I was saying. like People are, I feel like, sorry. Well, no, parents try to cure their kids. Exactly. What I don't like is when parents just bring their kids from surgery to surgery to surgery. Because mm -hmm. when, when, when the doctor said to my parents, they were, these therapies aren't doing anything, you've got, gone as far as you can go, mm -hmm. my parents were like, okay, we'll stop. Mm -hmm. But a lot of parents of friends of mine didn't stop. Mm -hmm. And they had so many surgeries, which is so much recovery time, so much pain. And I'm not sure it's worth it. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I think but. a lot of doctors are selling surgeries. Yeah. Because they make money from the surgery. So I guess, thank goodness my parents had good doctors for me. Yeah. Who weren't saying that. I only had one hamstring l lengthening when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it, the effects lasted a few months and I never did it again. Mm -hmm. That's the only surgery that I you had. had. Yeah. And I'm going to say, Thank you for joining us on Ability Fierce. Uh, we talked, we had this great talk with Athena Savitas. 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 Mm -hmm. Savitas. And we learned a lot about her life and her dreams of becoming a French teacher. And I'll bet from this talk, we're going to get her to become a French teacher. And some of you people out there in TV land, your kids may have to suffer through her French classes oh. because I suffered so much with French. I won't make you suffer, I promise. <laughs> it's fun. She's going to be the first fun French teacher. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. This has been an episode of Ability Fierce, and we'll see you soon. Hi, this is Michael Astor from Ability Fierce. Today we have with us Athena Savitas, a young woman with cerebral palsy who wants to be a French teacher. C'est parfait, c'est tout. C'est la meilleure chose que tu peux imaginer. Ça suffit? Yeah. Ça suffit? Oui. Bonjour. Oui. Bonjour. C'est très... Euh, Ah, je ne sais pas. Bien, <laughs> bien c'est très bien. Oui. 